Christina Wiegand and I am South Atlantic Council staff and I will be giving you an overview of Snapper Grouper Regulatory Amendment 29. First things first, where are we in the amendment development process? Based on feedback that the Council received during the scoping process, proposed actions and alternatives were developed in order to address the use of best fishing practices and powerheads. The Council has reviewed this analysis on the proposed actions and alternatives that I'll go over, and now public hearings are being held in order to collect more feedback from stakeholders on the current alternatives or suggestions for additional alternatives. In addition to the public hearings that we're going to be holding, a public Public comment session is always held during the week of the council meeting to address any amendments under development, including this one. So why is the South Atlantic Council considering action? Well, commercial and recreational fishermen have expressed concern about regulations that result in released fish that don't survive. And a portion of released fish will die due to foul hooking, injuries caused by bear trauma, predation, a variety of things. And so to reduce the number of released fish and improve the survivorship of fish that are released, the council is considering best fishing practices as either mandatory or voluntary options. And these best fishing practices will include both fishing techniques and gear that minimize the impact of capture and look to release fish with minimal handling and time out of the water. Additionally, fishermen have expressed some concern about inequitable access for the dive component of the snapper grouper fishery. Powerheads, sometimes called bang sticks, are prohibited in federal waters off South Carolina. So to allow for more consistent regulations for the dive component of the snapper grouper fishery, the council is considering removing the powerhead prohibition in federal waters off South Carolina. Or alternatively, they could consider prohibiting powerheads in the EEZ throughout the South Atlantic. So what is barotrauma and why does it happen? Well, most marine fishes have a gas-filled organ that's known as a swim bladder. And this swim bladder allows the fish to control its buoyancy as well as its location within the water column. Now, barotrauma, a condition that's often experienced by snapper grouper species, occurs when a fish is rapidly reeled up from depth. And the change in pressure causes the fish's swim bladder to expand, and in some cases burst, which will cause air to fill the body cavity. And along with causing internal damage, this expansion can prevent the fish from swimming back down to the capture depth, which is why they're sometimes called floaters. And this decreases the fish's chances of survival and makes it more vulnerable to predators. Now, fish that are experiencing barotrauma exhibit some clearly identifiable signs, and these include bulging eyes, swollen abdomen, or the stomach and intestines protruding from the mouth. Now, not all species are going to react the same way to barotrauma, but if a fish is experiencing any of these symptoms, it will likely need some help descending back down to the capture depth. Now onto what this amendment is about. There are best fishing practices that can help reduce the number of released fish as well as improve the survivorship of released fish. Standard practice to improve survivorship is to reduce handling in the amount of time a fish is going to be out of the water. However, a fish experiencing barotrauma may not survive without some assistance. And there are two types of tools that can be used to treat barotrauma. The first type of tool are venting devices, and these are sharp, hollow tools that can be used to release gases that have overexpanded due to barotrauma. And once those gases have been released, organs can return to their original positions and the fish should be able to swim back down. When venting, fishermen should hold the fish on its side firmly and insert the venting tool at a 45 degree angle. And it should be inserted into the fish approximately one to two inches behind the base of the pectoral fin. And it should be inserted only deep enough to release the gases. And it's important to note that instruments that are not hollow, things like fishing hooks or knives are not appropriate for venting a fish and will cause more harm. The second type of device are descending tools, and these are tools that are able to quickly send a fish back to the depth where it was caught. And rapidly sending the fish back down to depth will cause the gases in the swim bladder to recompress, which again should allow the fish to swim away. Now, descending devices can be purchased or made by hand, but they're generally some kind of weighted device that's going to be attached to fishing line or rope, and that has a clamp or a hook to attach to the mouth of the fish.
Next on the list, we've got circle hooks, and these are a type of fishing hook designed such that the point is going to turn back towards the shank, creating this circle or oval shape. These are typically used with natural baits. And the perk of circle hooks is that they're more likely to hook a fish in the mouth because the circular shape is going to allow the hook to move towards the jaw without catching on the fish's gut or throat. Furthermore, non-offset or inline circle hooks, and these are hooks where the point is turned back perpendicular to the shank, are less likely to injure a fish. Offset circle hooks, on the other hand, are less ideal, and these are more likely to result in the hook catching before the fish's jaw and lodging in the gills or the gut. Now, in addition to avoiding internal damage, fish that end up being hooked in the mouth are going to be easier to dehook, which is going to decrease the amount of time the fish is being handled. And since circle hooks will set as you reel in the line, they're going to be great for inexperienced anglers as well as bottom fishing. The first action in this amendment looks at specifying requirements for the use of descending devices and or venting devices when fishing for or possess possessing species in the snapper group or fishery management unit. And the current preferred alternative would require a descending device be on board a fishing vessel fishing for or possessing species in the snapper group or fishery management unit within six months of implementation of this amendment. And that would be for private recreational vessels for hire vessels and commercially permitted vessels. And the six month delay in implementation of this descending device requirement is intended to allow fishermen to purchase the necessary devices as well as to become familiar with their proper use. For the purposes of Action 1, the Council has created a set of definitions for descending and venting devices in order to provide guidance to fishermen when they're purchasing or building these devices. Any device that's used to comply with the requirements in Action 1 will need to meet the standards that are outlined in these definitions. The Council is especially interested in getting some input on the public regarding the definition they have for descending device. They would like to know if the definition allows fishermen the flexibility to create innovative descending devices while still ensuring that any homemade devices are effective. And they would like to get some input on the public about how enforceable they feel the definition of descending device is. And we're asking you to think from the perspective of experiencing a law enforcement boarding and having to defend your descending device choice. And finally, we've heard from the public that rigged and ready is an important co component of the definition and the council would like to know what the public feels is necessary for a descending device to be rigged and ready. Throughout the development of Regulatory Amendment 29, the council has received numerous public comments requesting information on how descending devices and or venting device requirements will be monitored and ultimately considered during stock assessments. And so in order to address these concerns, the council has directed staff to work with NIMS to develop a research and monitoring plan for addressing descending device usage and release treatment, including the possibility of reporting through existing programs. And once developed, this research and monitoring plan is going to be included as an appendix to the amendment for the Southeast Fishery Science Center and the Southeast Regional Office to consider. Additionally, the Council's SSD has been asked to comment on how requirements for descending devices, as well as non-offset circle hooks, may be considered in future stock assessments. Moving on from descending devices and venting devices, the second action in this amendment looks at modifying the requirement for the use of non-stainless steel circle hooks. Currently, non-stainless steel circle hooks are required when you're fishing for or possessing species in the snapper group or fishery management unit with hook and line gear and natural baits north of 28 degrees north latitude, which is just a little bit south of Cape Canaveral, Florida. There are four alternatives under this. You have the no action alternative. The Council's current preferred is Alternative 2, which would require the use of non-offset non-stainless steel circle hooks specifically, and it would require them north of that same 28 degree north latitude boundary. Alternative 3 would simply require that non-offset non-stainless steel circle hooks be on board as opposed to specifically requiring their use. And then the other preferred alternative the council has is going to require the use of non-stainless steel hooks specifically throughout the South Atlantic. Last but not least is action three. This looks at adjusting the powerhead prohibitions in the South Atlantic region 
Currently, the use of powerheads to harvest snapper grouper species in federal waters off of South Carolina is prohibited, while it is allowed in federal waters off of North Carolina, Georgia, and Florida. The council's preferred alternative, alternative two, is to go ahead and allow the use of powerhead for harvest of species in the snapper grouper fishery management unit in the federal waters off of South Carolina for both private recreational for hire and commercially permitted vessels. Uh, alternative three would be to prohibit the use of powerheads throughout the South Atlantic. We're going to be holding two separate public hearing webinars for this amendment, one on April 30th and one on May 1st, both starting at 6 p.m. During those, staff will go over a presentation. There'll be an opportunity to ask questions, followed by another opportunity to provide your comments on the record. Registration is required for these webinars, and you can register by clicking on the links provided in this slide. Additionally, materials are available on the Council's website that will summarize this amendment. Finally, if you're unable to attend the webinar and make public comment then, we will have an online public comment form available. And the council just requests that if you would like your comment to be included in the briefing book for the June 2019 meeting, it will need to be submitted by May 10th at 5 p.m. If you want to stay connected with the South Atlantic Council and stay informed about all our fisheries, you can find us online. And you can also follow us on Facebook or Twitter. And last but not least, if there's something that we didn't cover or you have any more questions, please feel free to contact us. If you've got questions about this particular amendment, please feel free to contact me. If you've got questions about the South Atlantic Council in general, you can contact Cameron Rhodes, our fishery outreach specialist, or Kim Iverson, our public information officer.